And now we learn that those in charge of the Secret Service was like an affirmative action DEI hire and that uh, this assassin some 500 feet away, I'm told by those who do such things, this is like a, making a two-foot putt. And that was a miracle that Donald Trump survived and it's such a tragedy that a firefighter died. But I want to get your reaction on that. And also the Secret Service cannot find him who owned the cocaine in the White House. You had an agent with Kamala Harris that uh, had a nervous breakdown. And now this event takes place. It was either negligence or recklessness. First, your comments and my opening remarks, and I want to talk about your column about God protecting Trump. Bill, uh, yesterday, with this assassination attempt, that if he had moved his head or hadn't moved his head or moved it one inch one way or one inch the other way, actually, my understanding is a quarter of an inch, he'd be dead now. So it's a miracle, and I believe he's chosen by God. I believe he's protected by God. Now I think everyone understands why I think he's the chosen one, and it really is apropos now, that song and, and my belief he is, he is touched by God. He is a special person. He is human, but he's superhuman. And uh, I heard the story this morning, and I assume it to be true, that uh, one, of the, one of the golf club employees at Bedminster, which <laughs> yes. Trump slept overnight. Did you hear that story? Yes, I Trump did. Trump hit a 20-foot putt, and when he made the putt, he said, that's just me and the shooter. I make my shots. <laughs> <laughs> this is an unbelievable guy. Yeah. This is an amazing, amazing guy. And, and no world leader in history, Bill, has ever come close to being assassinated and then jumped up in the air over the Secret Service and, and, and screamed, fight, 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 and put his fist in the air with that defiant look on his face, with blood on his face. It is the most iconic image since Iwo Jima and putting the flag at the top of Mount Suribachi at Iwo Jima. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my entire life. How you react like that, you know, Trump, Trump doesn't have scripts. He doesn't have teleprompter. No. He just did that pure gut reaction. Yep. That's his reaction, to fight and be defiant and be in your face. I'm surprised he didn't put his finger up three times and scream, F you. He's an amazing, amazing street fighter. And that's what America needs. That's what we need. And by the way, I agree with Dick Morris, who said today the election is over. Trump won. And I agree. It's over. Democrats are already preparing for the defeat. Trump is the winner. Between the conviction and the indictments and the harassment and the persecution and now the assassination attempt, he has won over the entire nation. And you know what I expect in the next few days? I'm betting you this. I'll bet you'll hear that sometime next week after the convention, there's going to be a funeral for that wonderful fire chief right. in, uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania. And I'll bet you Trump, Trump comes to the funeral. I'll bet you money he flies to that man's funeral. I'll bet money on it. Uh, he is that kind of guy. Remember, he went to the wake of a police officer he didn't know. Right. Here's the guy that, that went to his rally and died. I'll bet you Trump is making plans to go to that w wonderful, poor, heroic man's funeral. What a terrible thing. But I'll bet you Trump acknowledges it and shows why he's the greatest leader in the world. Well, Donald Trump has set up a GoFundMe page for him, and people should go there and look at it. I, I suppose when you say the photo of bloodied President Trump surrounded by Secret Service with the American flag waving in the background, refusing to leave without his shoes, then pumping his fist again and again, <laughs> mouthing, fight, 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 will now be the iconic, iconic image of our times. Trump's instant reaction was otherworldly. No one, no politician in history would react like that ever being shot. Actually, no other politician in history has ever reacted like that. And that wasn't a scripted moment. That wasn't like uh, Biden trying to read and mumbling and fumbling through a teleprompter. That was at that moment he wanted to tell the faithful and those who care deeply about him, for whom both of us pray nightly, that I'm okay, I'm going to make it. And then he'd be let off. Do you have any, you know, number one, when Kennedy was shot, when Reagan was shot, Reagan had the same humor that Trump had. He looked up to the surgeon on the OR table and said, I hope you're a Republican, doctor. And, and the doctor said, well, <laughs> but for this operation, I am a Republican. Uh, do you have confidence? Uh, no one has answered the question as to how is it possible that someone could get on an extended roof 150 yards away, about 500 feet, and, and have a dead shot on the president of the United States to be 45, 47. No one could have done that unless the Secret Service had complete negligence. And I pray to God, I don't believe it was recklessness or an intent. How is it possible? that 50,000 go through a proctological ex exam, and they're standing in a field for hours in 94-degree temperatures with the sun beating down on them, 
and, and they have to go through purses and wallets and, and all that stuff. And here's someone has a clear shot at the head of Donald Trump. How's that possible if the management of the Secret Service was competent? The government is incompetent, but the one thing the government has always done fairly well, not perfect, but policing, military, FBI, that's what the government used to do really well. I used to really respect police, military, FBI, DOJ, CIA, Secret Service. Lately, they plant DEI you know, in all of these organizations, and it's a bunch of dummies who didn't deserve their jobs. Lately, that's what's been happening, and you don't have the same quality of people at West Point or Annapolis, or the Air Force Academy, or in the Air Force, or in the Army, or in the police, or in the FBI, or in the Secret Service. It's just not the same quality anymore. And now the head of the Secret Service is a woman, and she said her goal is to make the Secret Service 30% women. You know, look, if women are as good as men, I got no problem at the job. No problem at all. Absolutely. But I don't think they are at Secret Service. But if they are, fine. Whoever is the best at the job should get the job. And by the way, I, I put this out on Twitter today. If I'm Donald Trump, I hire an entire team of Mossad to guard me in addition to the Secret Service. I'm not saying fire the Secret Service. There are some very brave men and women and some very brave people that ran up there and they covered them up and they were willing to take the shot. And I say you add, you don't take away, you don't demote them, you don't fire them, you add them to the Secret Service. I would not trust my life only to the Secret Service ever again, I would say I demand my own private security force and I would hire 50 retired Mossad from the Israeli forces who are the best fighting and intelligence people in the world and put them in charge of Trump security with the Secret Service and let them coordinate together. That's my opinion on how you handle this. I kind of watch a lot of the retired agents, including uh, uh, Dan Bongino, talk about this. And it used to be a big deal to be a presidential Secret Service agent. They can't get sufficient qualified men and women of whatever race or gender to serve. And part of the reason is we can't get Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. We can't get cops, can't get deputy sheriffs. There's not a sense in the country there's something greater than myself. And I don't mean the rank and file who would throw their body on top of, uh, of Trump. I don't mean those who, who uh, patrol the streets of Las Vegas or Cincinnati. I mean it is hard to get individuals to sacrifice their life and limb for a country they've been taught is racist, sexist, and homophobic, and that we're, we're anti-Islamic. We Kids come out of high school and college not wanting to serve. Now, how do we overcome that in the next, I hope, 12 years? Whoever he picks as VP, I want to be president, uh, uh, Wayne Allen Root, for eight years after that, and needs 12 years to completely reform the DOJ, completely reform the FBI, who was part of the mob to bring down Donald Trump and raided his home. CIA. DIA, get CIA. CIA is again need serious reform, and as and as uh, as as sure as as has been said by money, the CIA and the FBI will get you. Schumer said this ten thousand ways from Sunday. If you mess with them, they're going to mess with you. And so the CIA and the FBI and the DIA all mess with Donald Trump from the beginning. And I don't mean the rank and file; I mean the leadership in Washington. So how do we leadership, reform right. all yes. that leadership, not the rank and file? Well, and first of all, don't forget DHS. you got to reform yeah. DHS, Department yeah. of Homeland Security. Don't no, forget, I, I didn't even realize that's who the Secret Service right. they is it. under the roof of. Did you know that? They're under, yeah. They've moved it to DHS, yeah. which means that Donald Trump's life is in the hand of Mayorkas, Alejandro <laughs> Mayorkas. He's a communist is what he is. He's like the kids I met at Columbia University who were all communists and pledged to destroy this country one day. And that was 40 years ago, and they're all doing it right now. And, and they're no different than the kids at Harvard and the kids at Princeton and the kids at Dartmouth and the kids at Penn and the kids at Yale and the kids at Stanford. They're all the same, little rich, spoiled brat elites who are guilty as sin because they were born rich uh, with a silver spoon, have everything their entire lives handed to them, and they're totally guilty. They were born rich and white, and they hate their own race. They hate white people, and they hate this country, and they hate rich people like their mommy and daddy, even though they are rich. That's the problem with America. You know, it's the opposite of you can never accuse Wayne Root of racism because the people who are destroying America, in my opinion, are all white liberals. White, guilty liberals are destroying America, the same kids I went to Columbia with. And it's just disgusting. And that's Ali Mallorca. So wanted to make sure you knew what he's made of and where uh, he's from. I can't wait for Thursday <laughs> night about 9 o'clock. There's going to be a 20 <laughs> to 30 minute ovation. By the way, my sister, Mary Diane Redden, is going to be one of the delegates. She's in Milwaukee now to vote for Donald Trump. She's going to do the uh, prayer. And I'm very proud of my sister. 
But can you imagine, about a minute remaining, can you imagine what happens Thursday night about 9 o'clock? Well, the nation is, is appreciative of this man. I think everybody, I, I agree with Dick Morris. I think it's all clinched, although I will never get no, overconfident. No, I'll no. tell you why. I think it's clinched that we're going to win with real votes. And you and I both know there's 20 million illegals that they're going to get to vote, plus fake votes of dead people, plus fake votes of people that moved and they used their names in five different states, plus, of course, mail-in ballots where they truck in, uh, you know, uh, 18 wheelers with a million ballots already pre-signed for whoever the Democrat nominee is. Let me make a couple of predictions here quick. I make them for a living. I'm pretty good at them, but I can't be perfect. But I'm right most of the time. Biden, I keep saying it, I've said it for two years, Bill, will not be the nominee of the no. Democrat Party. He can no. say all he wants, no. that he's staying, he's not going, he's going to finish the job. It's all posturing. His wife, Jill, is just negotiating for the best exit package and golden parachute they can ever get. She wants $100 million, but Joe Biden will be gone by the convention as far as the VP for Trump. My pick, again, out of all the people in the field, so it's hard to pick only one, I think I'll be right. I think it's J.D. Vance. I really do believe. J.D. Vance will be the vice president on uh, unveiled on either Monday or Tuesday night Good with at the me. convention from your state of Ohio. That's and it. it's funny because in 2016, I wrote the book, Angry White Male. He wrote the book, Kill Billy Elegy. And it's they're the same book. We both think the exact same way. <laughs> there were two books fighting for white right. working class people. And that's the way I think. So I'm a big fan of J.D. Vance. I think he'll be a fine vice president, maybe a president of the United States someday. Got to run once again. Got to have you on uh about this assassination attempt. Wayne Allen Root, once again, thank you for coming on the Bill Cunningham Show. Thank you, Wayne. Root, Root for America is the website. Root, R-O-O-T, for F-O-R, America. That's where all three of my TV shows and my nationally syndicated radio show can be found. Every day of the week, I've got TV and radio or both or, or, or more than one TV show. All of them are at rootforamerica.com. Thank you, Bill, and God bless you, and God bless America. God bless Donald Trump. Let's continue. Bill Cunningham with you every Sunday night. Hollywood has been calling for this for years. Remember Kathy Griffin having Trump's head and, and, and insinuating that yes. someone should, you know, cut his head off? We, you know, we can say that the news hasn't directly called for any type of assassination attempts on President Trump. But Hollywood, the, 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 the elites in the, in, the, in the industry, as far as social media goes, it, the view? See, we want to stop Joe Biden's policies. They want to physically stop President Trump. It's not the necessary the policies. It's him. He represents the threat to democracy. So I am not surprised that what, what has taken place today, it was a total shock. Don't get me wrong. I thought this was some type of nightmare that none of us wanted to get into. But when you look at the words of people in Congress, People in the Senate, when they say, when you see them get in their face, you tell them they're not wanted here. This has been building up to this moment of physically stopping someone from running for president. They got the Department of Justice after them. We've got lawsuit after lawsuit. Now, if we can't win those and his approval ratings still go up, we'll just try to assassinate him and physically stop him. And it's a sad day here in America. And I've been fighting back anger. And I've been fighting back tears. And for all my family and friends that have been, I've gotten probably 300 text messages in the last hour or so. I'm okay, but this country needs some major healing right now. And we got to pray for President Trump's family. And we got to pray yes. that this country can get beyond the point of assassinating their political opponent.